Hi everyone, so this is the um, fourth lesson in the new quadratics pack, uh, the 2023 pack, it's a slightly change. So it's looking at the quadratic formula and the discriminant. Now you might, you'll have been shown it at school, but you might not realise how important this little bit is here. The square root of the b squared minus 4ac. If you think about the square root part of it, you got two solutions if that square root was positive. Or, so if the answer inside the square root was positive, you could get a number out. So it gave you two numbers. If it was equal to zero, it got rid of the whole square root bit, and you're just left with one number. And then if the inside that square root was negative, then you said you had no roots. So the bit inside that square root is really, really important. The b squared minus 4ac. And that's called the discriminant. So it says for two distinct real roots, the bit inside the square root has to be positive, then you can get a number plus or minus to give you the two answers, the two roots. So you might have a graph, a quadratic graph that looks like that. Should we stick a y-axis in somewhere? It doesn't really matter where it is. There, or you could stick your y-axis over here or anywhere you like. What's important though is you've got two distinct real roots. I could also have like a, an upside down one, uh, like that, where well, it's got two distinct roots. Stick the, uh, the y axis in there, why not? So you can stick your y axis, oh, not doing it, stick your y axis anywhere you want. So then for b squared minus 4ac equals zero, it gets rid of the square root completely. And all you've really got in terms of working out a value is minus b over 2a, which gives you a single value. So we call it a repeated root. So if you imagine lifting this graph up till it just touches, then that's what the repeated root is. So it's kind of like got two roots at the same point somewhere like that. Right about there where it was. So we could have one that looks like that where it just touches. Oh, like that, where it just touches. Should we stick a y axis in? Not really fussed about to be honest. Uh, there we go. Looks lovely. So I've got one repeated root where it just touches the axis. But then I've got the case where the square root is negative. So we don't do the square root of a negative number. That's a further mathsy thing. So we said, oh yeah, there's no answer there. It doesn't work. So what it means is the graph is completely above the x-axis or the graph is completely below the x-axis. There. So that's our three cases. So let's have a look at these examples then. So it just wants you to determine the number of real roots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the discriminant and then I'm just going to say from there what it means. So if I'd like a little plan, I'm just going to find... Find the discriminant and then interpret it. So b squared minus 4ac will be 3 squared minus 4 times 2 times 8. So that's going to be, what's that going to be? It's going to be 9 takes 64, isn't it? So that's going to be minus 55. So b squared minus 4ac is minus 55. So we know that b squared minus 4ac is less than zero. Therefore, it has no real roots. So if you can beat me to it, just work out zero two. I mean, you reckon there's going to be like one of each type, isn't there? But what's quite nice is it gives us an opportunity to set out a mathematical argument with a little bit more coherence than you might have done at GCSE. So what's that going to be? It's going to be a plus 16, uh, plus 28, so that's going to be a plus 44. So b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero. Therefore, two distinct real roots. 
They don't write a lot of maths, really, to be honest. It's really stimulating the words. What we do need to write, well, when we do need to write it, we need to write it back. That makes sense? Uh, so basically, got minus 12 squared minus 4 lots of 2 times 18. I'm guessing that this is equal to 0 because it's the only one we've not had. The completed pack says yes. Uh, so b squared minus 4 is equal to 0. I'll write it one properly. Therefore, one repeated real root. There you go. That's all right, isn't it? It's nice, nice and easy. Uh, so then, what does it say? Hence, match match each of the above. All right, okay. Uh, hence, match each of the above equations to one of the graphs below. Right. So what we got then? So definitely, the no real roots has to be the third one along. So that's got to be a two x squared plus three x. Plus eight. There. Right then. The one repeated root has to be 2x squared minus 12x plus 18. Y equals. It's the same equation, doesn't it? So then I've got the other two to choose between now. So the only one I've not chosen is the one with two distinct real roots, which is this. And if you look, it's got a minus there, it's minus x squared. So it's going to be an end shape here. So that's going to be y equals minus x squared minus 4x plus 7 is 0. There. There we go. That's all right, isn't it? So that's the one with nothing on it. Right, there's a, a, an example on the next page which we'll do before we do the applications. We do the applications on a different... Um, a different video. So it says find the values of k for which it has equal roots. So I know that equal roots is when b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0. Now I need to write down some form of statement, save what I'm doing. I'm setting something out. So my b will be k. My a will be 1, my c will be 9. So I'll just write that above it so you know. So a is 1, b is equal to k, c is equal to 9. Because it's in that right order, isn't it? But an x squared and x are a number. So I've got k squared minus 4 lots of 1 times 9 is 0. I've got k squared minus uh, 36 is 0. The eagle eyed amongst you might have spotted that as being. A difference of two squares. I mean, I can just take the 36 over and then just square root it. But the eagle eyed amongst you might have said, oh, yeah, do you know what? That's k plus 6. k minus 6 is equal to 0. So k plus 6 is 0. k is minus 6. Bar. k minus 6 is 0. k is 6. There. There you go. Same idea with this one, has two distinct real solutions. So I'm saying that that equation is equal to, b squared, it's the same as, sorry, b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0. But I know my a is 1, my b is 4, and this time my c is k. So let's see how they did it then. If it works. There you go, so I've got a statement. I've used it. And I've got that. Yeah. If it's more than a single value, we do something called set notation, which we'll go into in a bit more. But the idea is of a set of curly brackets, and we say that k belongs, when you're looking at e, to the real numbers, when you're looking at r, such that, it's not really dots actually, it's two little lines, k is less than 4. And that is properly defining that number, to say it can be anything less than 4. Right, I'm going to stop there. We're on 9 minutes 38, that's a good point to stop.